Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series by Fat Quarter Shop. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a quilt all the way from the start to the finish. This series is sponsored by Moda Fabrics and Eversung Sewing Machines. I'm gonna be giving you lots of tips and we're gonna be building our first quilt together. In this video, I'm gonna show you our fourth block, which is the half square triangle four patch. We're gonna make our half square triangles a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna show you how to trim them down, which is a trick you can use in all of your quilts. So if you want to not miss any of our videos, just subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified. Let's get started. There are lots of ways to make half square triangles, but we're gonna show you the most traditional way, but we're gonna be making ours a little bit bigger and trimming them down so that we can have a more accurate result. As you get more advanced, you can do other methods, but for today, we're gonna to be really simple. So we need to cut some seven inch squares from four fabrics. So I've got my four fabrics and I'm going to look and all in one corner, I haven't cut from that yet. So I'm gonna have all of my fabrics, they're nice and ironed, and I'm gonna stack them where I can cut in that one corner. So we're right here, and we can cut through all of these layers. So we have a six and a half inch ruler and if you're cutting a seven inch square, I'm just gonna tell you how you can be a little bit creative by just using a six and a half inch ruler. If you have a larger ruler, definitely use that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut from here to here about eight inches. And I'm just gonna make a cut. I'm gonna turn all of my fabric, keeping it all in place. I'm gonna put my ruler with a line right on my cut line. And I'm just gonna cut starting there. And we can put this away. So we've cut a little section off that's a little bit bigger than seven inches. And we'll use the line on our ruler We're gonna line up the bottom and the left with seven inches and cut. And then we'll just move our ruler up and continue cutting. We'll turn our fabric, just make sure you don't lose anything or get anything out of the stack. And then we're going to cut here. And again, I'm just lining up these lines, this lines and keeping this all in order. And then just move your ruler. So now we have four seven inch squares. And these will be our A's. And these will be our B's. Okay, I'm gonna set my B's aside and I'm just gonna work with our A's. What we're going to do is draw a line from corner to corner and the very center. Okay, I'm using a friction pin because the line will disappear with the heat of an iron later and you want to make sure you only use it on light fabric. The line will come back if you get into really cold weather. Now, after I've got that line drawn in the center, I'm gonna draw a line a quarter inch to the right by using this quarter inch dotted line on my ruler to line up with that center line. I'm gonna turn, put the quarter inch on this very center and draw another line. That's gonna give you three lines. One line in the center, 
and then align to the left and the right a quarter inch away. And I'll explain all of that in a second. We're gonna do the same thing on our remaining fabric A square. Center and then a quarter inch away. There are other types of marking tools that you can use. There are some tools that will disappear, the line will disappear with the air. So now we've got these. We're gonna pair the blue with the pink. We're gonna put those right sides together. Now solids don't really have right sides together, but if you're using a print, you want your right sides together. We're gonna put lots of pins in place so that when we go to the sewing machine and stitch, our fabric does not move. We're gonna put about four. And then we're gonna put the yellow with the green. And what you'll see is when we go to the sewing machine, we're gonna stitch on the two outer lines and that is gonna give you two half square triangles from each, and it will make much more sense after we cut those. So when we're done with this, we're gonna have four half square triangles. So again, when we go to the sewing machine, we're just gonna use our normal stitch length, which I like to use a 2.0, and we're gonna stitch on these outer two lines. So again, we're gonna stitch on this outer line, and if you're using a foot you wanna use one that has an open toe. And right here in the very center, there's a little line and you can use that line, that little dot to go against your line. So you just keep that. And I'm gonna leave my pins in until I've sewn everything all the way so that nothing shifts as I'm sewing. turn and I'm going to go to the other side and again stitch on this outer side and just line up the very center of your foot with the line. And this is how it will look. Now we can remove our pins and move to our second unit. So now we drew that center line. We're gonna cut on that center line 
This is going to be in your seam allowance, so cutting here doesn't have to be perfect. And then, if you take a little peek, you have got four half square triangles started. And now we're gonna take these to our ironing board. So now we have our half square triangles. We have made four, we're gonna set our seams nice and flat. Press to one side, just follow your pattern. We'll be pressing towards the green and the pink today. I like to press, finger press, and then put your iron right on that crease. Do that on all four. And you'll notice that I am not moving my iron too much, just nice and gentle. You want this crease to be nice and flat, so there's no puckers. And that is why when I iron, I iron right on the crease so that everything is nice and flat. You will follow the pressing arrows in your pattern. And so we have all four pressed, and now we're gonna take these and we're gonna trim them down. We made them slightly larger so that they would be able to be trimmed down. And if you're new at quilting, this is something you can do on your regular patterns just to make them a little bit bigger and then trim down. So on your Creative Grids ruler, there will be a 45 degree line and you can see this is six and a half. The width of this is six and a half. So we're gonna trim two sides and it's just a tiny bit that's gonna come off. Just wanna make sure your diagonal line is on this 45 degree angle. So you just trimmed a tiny, tiny piece off. We're gonna turn that around and we're gonna put this right back on that line and you'll see that now that we've trimmed one side, this six and a half inch line lines up. So we're lining this up and this up, and we're going to trim. And so now you have a perfect half square triangle that's six and a half inches square, and you haven't really wasted any fabric. We're just trimming a tiny bit off, and we're gonna do that on all four. Now we have them all trimmed up. That is an extra step that's usually not in the process, but by lining up on that 45 degree angle, you're gonna have perfect half score triangles and perfect points. Now we're going to line them up according to our pattern, and we're just gonna follow 
the pattern to make sure we've got it lined up correctly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew down this side. So the first thing we'll do is put them right sides together on the design board. And this time I'm going to pin three times. And when we go to the sewing machine foot, we're going to change our foot to be a quarter inch foot. And we're going to sew both of these seams. So I'm going to change to a quarter inch foot. And we're just going to start in this top left. You'll want to make sure your fabrics are lined up here nice. You don't want it like this so that it doesn't line up. So you want it nice and lined up. Start on the very corner and go down. Quarter inch seam. Just keep the fabric right on the edge of your foot. Remove your pin as you get to it. We're going to chain piece so we're not going to cut our thread. We're just going to keep going. Make sure your fabrics are lined up in the corner. together so they're staying in place and we are going to press towards the yellow green so first set your seams finger press toward the side then press and do the other side Finger press that down. And now we just need to sew this seam. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do to make sure this all comes out really nice in the center. So now I'm going to cut this piece in the center. We're going to put these right sides together. So I'm going to put my pen right in this intersection where this point is. And then I'm going to put it in the same spot on this next part. Keep my pin nice and flat. Put those together. And then I'm going to pin on each side of the intersection. That should keep it in place so that when you're stitching it together, it stays in place. And then we're going to put some more pins on the very left, right, and the center. And so all we have to do is go to our sewing machine and stitch all the way down here. So again, when we start, we wanna make sure that this is square so that you don't start something like this where it's not square. So you just wanna make sure this is nice and square on the end anytime you start. We're gonna use a quarter inch seam and then I'll show you some tips when we get to the center. So when you're sewing here, you want to sew right to the right of this point, not on, right not right on top of it and not to the left. And with the way that we have sewn, it should happen automatically. You can see your stitches, how perfect they look, and we're gonna go iron. So if you open your block, 
You can see if your points match, and they do. So we're going to set our seam, press according to your pattern. And again, I like to finger press, get that nice and flat, and then put your iron right on that seam. You can give it an all over press if you want. And then we can just trim all the slivers off of our block. So now your block is done and you can leave it just like this or you can just trim the edges just to get the threads off. That's totally per personal preference. And I am going to just trim and you'll see you just, a tiny, tiny bit comes off. You really don't want anything to come off. Just your little loose threads so that it's nice and crisp and then you can store it for when we put it together at the end. So here is your block four. I would love to see your blocks, so share them with me on social media and click the description box for all of the products we mentioned today and the free pattern. And join me next week for block five.